Hi everybody, welcome to Facebook Live with the Houston Zoo. My name is Amber and I am the Recovery Program Coordinator for our Atwater's Prairie Chicken uh, Breeding Program. So this right here is a model of an adult Atwater's Prairie Chicken. This is actually approximately life size. So a prairie chicken is not an actual chicken, it's a type of grouse. So they're a small, well camouflaged bird. Uh, they live in multiple different habitats in the United States, but the Atwater's prairie chicken is a very special bird. They're local to the Gulf Coast. So these guys are one of our uh, very special Texas natives. Their original range used to go into Louisiana, but right now you can only find them in the wild at the Atwater's Prairie Chicken National Wildlife Refuge and at some private lands in Goliad County. So these guys are super special. They're a very endangered species and we at the Houston Zoo have been working really hard on breeding them for re-release into the wild. And this one is a male, as you can tell because they have these, um, the males have these big air sacs and they have these cool feathers on their heads. They can raise them up and down. They kind of look like bunny ears when they put them up. And actually after we finish this, uh, later today there'll be a recap posted on Facebook and it'll have some video of an adult male at NASA doing his booming, which is uh, the coolest thing that they do. They do a fun little dance and they stomp their feet and that is how these guys attract the females. But all of our adults live at NASA. So we like to jokingly call them the space chickens, but we have a partnership with uh, NASA at Johnson Space Center where we have our adults in uh, some breeding pens out there. It's a lot quieter there and it mimics their natural environment. So we actually do a lot of work with planting grasses and uh, doing a lot of weeding out there to make sure it looks like a natural prairie for the adults. And it's also a lot quieter, not a lot of that hustle and bustle of the city. So all of our grown up birds are at NASA and here at the zoo, we've actually brought back some of the eggs and incubated them and this is where we raise the babies every year. So I'm going to put this guy down and show you some adorable cute little babies. Oh, okay, so we've got our first question here. Patrick asks how many eggs can they lay? And it really depends on the female. So we can get anywhere from 14 to 21 eggs in one clutch. So that's a lot of babies to take care of for one mom. So we're helping them out here by raising these guys up. So these guys are super attuned to movement. So what I'm going to give them right now are some live crickets. These chicks are just a couple days old. So they're about in this area, they're between one to two days old. So they hatch out and they weigh about 16 to 18 grams when they hatch and they grow super quickly. So they're very attuned to movement. They love live foods, they love bugs, mealworms. That's a lot of their diet here, but we also have a very special diet that we feed them. We actually get it from Missouri and they make it just for us for the prairie chickens. These guys grow so fast that in two weeks they're gonna weigh about 50 grams. Oh, and Sadi asks, can they fly? So when they're small like that, obviously they're still not all the way developed. You can see actually, I'm gonna pick this guy up and bring him a little closer so you can see his little wings. So you can see they're already starting to develop those tiny feathers. He's just two days old and he's already turning that down into feathers. In a few weeks, they'll start kind of hopping around and using those muscles to build them up. And as adults, they can fly. They can fly up to a mile in one straight burst. So out on the prairie, that's how they avoid their predators as they fly away from them. But they also utilize camouflage. Oops, that was a little more crickets than I meant to throw in there, but they're gonna love that. Okay, Luca wants to know, what do they like to eat? So this right here is their favorite. So their favorite thing when they're little is bugs. So it's tons of protein in those bugs. And this is what they eat in the wild. The babies really mainly eat insects in the prairie. As they get older, they'll eat more plants. So they like forbs and like little tender um, grass shoots and grass seeds. The babies will eat some of the grass seeds too. And that's why we have this like greens in here. So they've got like spinach, kale, nice finely chopped greens to give them some of that good nutrition in there. Oh, that guy got a big cricket. That was good. All right, Camilla, what is their lifespan? Okay, so 
Like most animals, they will live longer here at the zoo than they would in the wild because things are a little bit less stressful at the zoo and they don't have to worry about predators. So these guys have a lot of natural predators. One of my bosses calls them the cheeseburger of the prairie and I really like that analogy because they're the bottom of the food chain. Everything wants to eat them. And so that's one of the challenges we face when we're trying to reintroduce these guys is they are naturally a part of the food web that's going to be consumed by other animals, which is why we keep working to bring more out there and bolster the population. But in the wild, we have monitored some for multiple years. We've seen them live to be two and sometimes even three years old out there. There's some that have been older, but an average around two to three in the wild. At the zoo, we've had adults in our collection live up to 10 years. So they can keep breeding, but it's just in the wild, it's a lot more stressful and they're going to succumb to sicknesses a little bit sooner and be exposed to more dangers than they would be here where they're kind of in a more controlled environment. And we have, okay, Sherry wants to know, are they out where guests can visit? And that is the reason that we are doing this Facebook Live for you guys, because these guys are extra special. They are very easily stressed because they are the cheeseburger of the prairie. So if everything wants to eat you, you are naturally going to be afraid of everything. So we tend to keep these guys away from loud noises, away from the public so that they can be less stressed and then they will grow better. That's the same reason that we have them at NASA instead of here at the zoo because a less stressful environment is better for them. Their natural strategy is to stay very still and hide and then they wait till the very last second if something's trying to get them and then they fly really fast straight up into the air and get away from the predator. But here at the zoo, we keep them behind the scenes just so that they don't have to worry about guests or like loud traffic and everything. So keep them nice and quiet back here with us. Luke wants to know how they keep warm. So I don't know if you can see it in Rachel's video, but there's a little heat lamp right here where my finger is pointing. And this box, we just opened it. I don't know if you saw, we took the lid off. So this is called a brooder box. We use this for domestic chickens as well. But this is mimicking the heat that they would normally get from their mother. So we keep them at a warm 91 to 95 degrees because they're not quite good at regulating their own body temperature when they're this small. So we use the heat lamps in here to keep them warm the mom would brood on the babies to keep them warm at night. So the moms will sit on top of the babies and gather them all under their feathers to keep them warm in the wild. And we do have a couple hens at NASA that are raising their own chicks this year, which we haven't done for a while. And so far, so that's doing pretty good. We've got one of our moms that has 10 babies, so she's doing great. And if you guys would like, we can step outside and I will show you a special treat of how we're using our domestic flock of chickens to help us raise these guys. So I'll show you and you'll get to see exactly how a chicken broods on top of the babies to keep them warm. Do we want to answer one more question before we step outside? I think Mary Lou had one. Oh, Johan asked, are they endangered? So. For you guys that are just joining us again, these are the Atwaters Prairie Chickens and they are probably the most endangered bird in Texas. So there are about a hundred of these guys left in the wild right now. Their numbers were climbing because of breeding efforts that the Houston Zoo and our other partners have been doing to kind of um, use our birds that we breed here at the zoo to bolster the wild population but they got hit really hard, just like a lot of us, by Hurricane Harvey. So it really squashed their numbers down and now they're starting to climb back up again. Oh, and Peter wants to know how you tell the boys from the girls. So those babies that we just looked at, you definitely cannot tell quite yet whether they're a boy or a girl, although they will sometimes try and do the dance when they're just little guys and they stomp their little feet and it's so cute. And then you can guess that it's probably going to be a boy. But I'll bring out our little model here again since we don't have the adults here at the zoo. So this is a model of a male and they have these feathers here. They're called pinnae feathers. The females have them too, but they're much shorter and they can raise and lower these. And then they have these big air sacs on the side of their throat that they inflate and make this booming call to attract the female. So this is how you would tell 
in an adult, whether it was a boy or a girl. And the boys get these real nice eyebrows in the breeding season. And the females look similar to this, but her pinnae feathers would only be like that long instead. In the off season, the males do molt these, so they look pretty similar in the non-breeding season all year round. But what step outside, you guys can follow me. It'll be a little bit of a walk and we're gonna go visit our domestic chickens that are helping us raise these prairie chickens. Or do you wanna peek at one of the bigger guys real fast before we go? So those ones in there were about two to three days old. And these guys are about eight days old. And you see, come here, sweetie, they're still real fast. They're getting a little bit taller. Oh my, squirrely little guy. Okay, okay. Oh, don't jump down. <laughs> Here we go. So they're very fast and that's how they get away from the predators out there who tried to get away from me, but he didn't. Got good reflexes because I've been handling you guys for so long. So, and you see how he's still, how much longer his wings have gotten, how much bigger they are. And that's just the difference of three days to eight days old. So in a couple weeks, he'll be able to make a little short flight and they'll start kind of jumping around and exercising. So they graduate from the box to this area. So this is where we still have the temperature control, but they're starting to gradually get used to um, and regulating their own body temperature. They still have the warm light, but they've got more space to run around. And then when they're about 50 grams, like in weight, they're gonna move outside completely on their own. And then that'll be in about two weeks. So they grow super fast and in two months they'll already be at NASA. So let's go out and look at the ones under the chickens. So the ones under the chickens are actually already outside on the gravel. And that's because, watch your step here ladies, it's a little tricky. That's because they do have a mom to brood on them and keep them warm. So we feel comfortable letting them be outside in the environment when they have that mom chicken to keep them warm. So we've got two groups of chicks outside with the hen. And you guys might recognize this from the Facebook Live that my friend Jess did. So this is the behind the scenes bird area. Camilla wants to know if they make good pets. So the answer to that one is no. So the Atwater's Prairie Chicken, even though it has the name chicken in the name, it's not actually a domestic chicken. They got the name because they used to be like so prolific, different species of prairie chickens across the, uh, across the United States. There's tons of different, uh, there's like the greater prairie chicken, the lesser prairie chicken. And there were so many of them that I think people used to eat them like they were a chicken, like you would eat chicken dinner. But these guys are super endangered. It's only about around a hundred of these guys left in the wild. So I think Texas Parks and Wildlife would have something to say if you had a pet prairie chicken. And they're also very nervous because like I was talking about, their natural defense strategy is to stay hidden and then fly away really fast. So they would be more likely to get away and not kind of hang out with you like a domestic chicken would. Domestic chickens can be very nice and they can make good pets, but not a prairie chicken. So these guys right here are, I wanna say they're a little over a week old, maybe approaching two weeks old, these little ones in here. And you see how much bigger they've already gotten, how much more feathering they have in their wings. I'm gonna open this, but I'm gonna stay really close so that they don't come out. You're already coming out. And I'm gonna to toss them some snacks. Look, they know what this coffee can means, huh? And that's their mom. Her name is Tiny Tim. And she's gonna do exactly what a good mommy chicken would do. And she's gonna call those babies to come over and eat that food. She says, come on guys, check it out. Lunchtime. And you can see that they're responding to mom's calls. They're still pretty independent already. They're kind of doing their own thing, run, roaming around the area, building their muscles and exploring. But they definitely respond to mom when she calls them or in this case, foster mom, not their real mom. These guys are adopted. <laughs> and then she will keep them warm at night by sitting on top of them and she'll gather them under her feathers 
and make sure that they don't get too cold since they don't have those heat lamps. So Tiny Tim is a walking heat lamp for these guys. Oh, Danny wants to know what I'm feeding them. That's pretty good for me to tell you guys. I got a bunch of mealworms right here. Oh, you can't see my hand. Delicious mealworms. So just like they would eat a lot of bugs in the wild, give them bugs here. I'm gonna step over here because we have a chicken next door. That's Dory. She's our other foster mom and she's getting very jealous that she can see them all getting lunch and they're not. So let's give some to Dory and her babies. So these guys are about a week younger and you can see the difference that they're already getting pretty tall. You can have the rest of this kiddos. So you can see they're starting to feather in, but you can see how much taller the other ones are. They're getting more feathers and less of that yellow downy fluff. Where's the rest of your kiddos? I know you got more, you gotta call them. There they go. Do you see that one running in from the back? It said, oh wait, mom said it's time for lunch. Come on, babies. And they are, have a really big appetite. They're great eaters. Although sometimes they confuse toes for mealworms. I think that's what happened here. Someone bit someone else's toe and that's how they had that little tumble. But we offer them fresh bugs multiple times a day and fresh greens because they get dried out. So we give them lots of food. And Eva wants to know what their natural habitat is. So these guys are found on the prairie and that is one of the reasons that they're so endangered. So the prairie biome is the most endangered biome in North America. So the prairie used to be kind of like all of Houston was prairie. And so now we have less and less grassland. So these guys can only be found at the um, Atwater's Prairie Chicken National Wildlife Refuge, which actually is still open because it has a driving loop. So if you guys want to visit, you should visit very early in the morning. That's your best chance of seeing a wild prairie chicken and it's during the breeding season and that's kind of coming to an end. But I still encourage you to go to the National Wildlife Refuge, Atwater's Prairie Chicken National Wildlife Refuge, that's in Eagle Lake. And you can check out their habitat and you can learn more about them. They've got some signs out there. Even if the visitor center isn't open, you can make a driving loop around and check stuff out. And it's really cool. I've seen um, some adult males out there booming before, but you gotta go early in the morning to see them, but you can go any time of day um, when, during open hours. But you can go in the afternoon just to drive around and look at the prairie. You'll see lots of other birds and lots of other cool stuff and the wildflowers are blooming right now. So that's really neat. I'm sorry, Dory, I already fed you all the worms. I can bring you more in a little bit. <laughs> so these guys right now, like I said, uh, between a week to two weeks old. In about a month and a half to two months old, we will move them to NASA. And then between two and a half to three months old, they will actually be released to the wild. So that's how fast these guys grow. So I'm really glad that I got a chance to show these guys to you because they are behind the scenes and not very many people get to see them. So I wanna thank you guys for joining us today. And I just, I'm hoping that everybody got to learn a little bit more about these guys. I'm really excited to share their story and connect you to this Houston native. And I'd like to thank you all for supporting the zoo, even though these, even through these very different times. So I encourage you to go on the zoo's website. And if you'd like to show some extra support, we do have an emergency zoo fund at houstonzoo.org. And we will have another Facebook live event tomorrow at 11 a.m. Oh, it says tomorrow, Monday, Monday? <laughs> yes, Monday. That's a teaser. Who knows what day of the week it is anymore, you guys? Is it Friday already? It's the weekend. All the days are the same, I swear. So, just kidding. You can still check out extra stuff on the Houston Zoo's website. And I encourage you to come back to the follow-up. The recap video will have video of the adults that you can take a look at and a little bit more information about the birds at NASA. But Monday we'll have another Facebook Live, but you can still watch stuff and check things out on the website every day. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a great day.